What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Jiu Jitsu Radio. Listen, yeah, we're going to talk about our sponsors. So if you want to skip ahead, skip ahead. But if you want to support the podcast, you're going to tune in. You're going to listen the F up. Right? Maybe, we sh- maybe we should give them like a hand signal. When you see my hand go we up already, like this, we already have means like- you can skip to that point. So from one hand signal to the other? Yeah. I okay, don't know. so ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Spirit fingers. Jazz hands. All right. Listen, if you want to support the podcast, why don't you go ahead and hit the bell, hit the notification button, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching us on YouTube. But if you're listening to us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, you name it, we're on there. If you're following us on there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast with all your friends. The more that you help us out, the more opportunities we get to get this party going all over the globe. And don't forget, you can pick up your shirt. Jiu-Jitsu Radio shirts, whether it's the Shut the Fuck Up and Roll or the Just Roll or the Hustle by Tom shirt. Get the Hustle by Tom shirt. Um, You can just pick them up. Just follow us on Instagram. You'll get the links directly from there. Or look at the description below. We'll throw in the link for you. Hustle by Floating Dwarf. Yeah, I wanted to do that. Floating Dwarf brand. Floating floating Dwarf LLC. Uh, But, yes, if you guys pick those, uh, those items up, that goes straight to us and it helps us pay for this lovely room you see right here don't worry all the goofy shit that comes out of my own pocket you're not paying for that you're paying for us to be able to rent out this space so we can do the podcast for you so go ahead and pick up your own jujitsu radio gear and while you're at it why don't you go check out our sponsors this podcast is brought to you by choke aloha if you visit chokealoha.com you buy a bunch of awesome swag guess what we're going to give you 20% off. Why? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's almost half. Uh, that's like a quarter of the way to half. Or almost half to half. That's all, it's, it's almost, it's half, almost to half, half to half. So, you know, you're welcome. But you got to use the promo code Jujitsu Radio at checkout, and you'll get 20% off. And listen, they only do 20% off on very limited occasions. <laughs> Don't mind my buddy here. See, he was running so fast to go to Chocoloha.com that he got winded. So... Promo code Jiu-Jitsu Radio at Chocoloha.com. Get yourself some of the coolest swag from one of our first best supporters, Chocoloha. And then, listen, whether it's before a roll or after a roll, you got to stay clean. Not like you. You got to stay clean, clean. Like, oh, I, 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 clean. You know, I, I don't. I got it's, it's shower time after every time I poop. I, I, oh, man. I don't know how you poop. Like, is it just like that? I that sit on a toilet. That's okay. normally how I do it. Okay. So but you just go to poof and you get a shower. I poop time. and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a shower now. You know what's the worst is when you take a shower and then you got to poop. That's the absolute worst thing. I though. hate that. But in the meantime, when you do shower, you can go and use some jujitsu soap. Go to jujitsusoap.com. And use the promo code JJ Radio. You'll get 10% off some of the best soap on the market. Like I said, I have stopped using any other soap. I don't buy anything at the grocery store. I don't need it because I get jujitsu soap. They don't even give them to me for free. I willingly pay for this because I love it. And they have more limited edition bars. They have a blueberry bar out now. I don't know if I'm good with soap that I would want to eat. I, it's tough. It's very, very tough for me. Like the mango one, man, there's times where I'm just like, oh, no, there's lye in there. I can't eat that. But... It's great for the skin, and you can get yours at discount with the promo code JJRadio at checkout. You can also pick up a bath bomb. So for your lady friend or for your male friends that can fit in a bathtub, not us. We can't fit in a bathtub. I fit. I mean, I could take a bath. I I highly doubt that you can. Should I send you pictures? I'd rather you didn't. But you can send them to Steve, and then he'll just follow back up with me. But get yours at jujitsusoap.com, and then check out giraffechoke.com listen we are the only ones that have this exclusive promo code you can get a whole bunch of money off if you go to giraffechoke.com and you use the promo code JJ Radio, you'll get free shipping too on orders of $99 or more and you get the discount I mean I can't do anything more than that other than buying it for you, and that's not going to happen. But if you go to giraffechoke.com, use the promo code JJRadio, you'll get the discount. So, you know, you're welcome. Finally, for all our MMA friends or anybody in the combat sports, or actually really anybody who does a sport that needs... Or anybody that just has nuts. 
If you have the old mail gift bag, why don't you go to Diamond MMA? And then when you go to pick up one of the best cups slash athletic supporter, use the promo code Jiu-Jitsu Radio at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Listen, it's for your kids. You got to go play sports. It's an awkward situation when you have to have that conversation. Just say, hey, you know what? Go to DiamondMMA.com. Here's a credit card. Use this promo code. Get yourself some some nut protectors. We'll talk in the morning. Gotcha? Gotcha. Got it. DiamondMMA.com is the website. When you use the promo code Jujitsu Radio, you'll get 10% off and protect the boys. Twig and berries. The twig and berries. The, the sh- undercarriage. The smoke and the pancake. Right? What else would you call them? Um, I think every week. We sausage need to and up, eggs. We need I don't to know. come up with like new names. For your junk, you sausage and eggs. I never, I never, I actually never put that together. But sausage and eggs, sausage and eggs. I hope you never put together your sausage and eggs. Well, not my sausage and eggs. Your flesh unicorn. Your old Lance Armstrong. My baby, my baby arm holding an apple. The the human tripod. Anyway, that's it for our sponsors. Don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram at Jiu-Jitsu Radio. You can follow Sean at Gorilla Boy BJJ, And you can follow me at Sonder Marketing for all the behind the scenes of all the crazy photo shoots and video shoots that I do with all the pros. Let's get this party started. We already did. What are you doing? No. That was just the sponsors. Uh-huh. And now I got to cut the audio. So we can go do the other stuff. But why do we have to cut it if we're not doing it on the video? No, it cuts anyway. I'm going to have to edit it anyway. Oh. See? See what I'm saying? So this this would be where the whole... Now you forgot your hand. Do the Mm -hmm. hand. You can't leave us! Deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Kiss stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine right, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. Woo! There you go. Nice. All right. Now you can. And we're live. Semi live. Hey, how's about that event this weekend? That event was fun. World Series of Jiu-Jitsu. My favorite was D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan? Oh, man. You guys. Oh, shout out to Carlos. Carlos Diaz, our good friend and ADCC ref, who just happened to be in town for the show. He actually came down for business, and he hit me up. He's like, hey, where's the the tournament? And stopped by. I was totally caught by surprise, but it was awesome. It was great to have him. Um, I think we definitely couldn't have had any... A uh, better person stopped by for that event to really kind of get an in-depth. View. Yeah, no, for sure. Especially oh, with all the stuff good. that was going on. Speaking of which, and Carlos is is kind of a guy after our own heart. Doesn't take things too seriously. Yeah, he's always willing to take a good joke, and he's he's very intelligent. So he'll be able to throw out the the quick analogy or impromptu dad joke. And he's got the funny part is that he can he's you got to give him credit. He's really good at controlling himself of not throwing out the jokes that would be are like inappropriate jokes. He can say like, oh, the camera's on. No inappropriate jokes. He can he can tiptoe on that line. We're just battering we're t- rams. Yeah, I don't know. We're we're it doesn't a couple work of monkeys. Way. We're we're a couple of monkeys trying to get into a computer. A la, yeah. uh uh Hansel and uh, and and Derek Zoolander. Basically. Is how it works, but it was good. So thank you very much to Jason from World Series of Jiu-Jitsu for having us. Um, I'm pretty happy to say that we're going to be able to help out. I can't get into details, but we are going to be helping out uh, next year with more uh, World Series of Jiu-Jitsu events. So really looking forward to that. Um, make sure you guys follow World Series of Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a pretty cool event. It's really cool to see someone that's that passionate of pushing a uh, a jiu-jitsu tournament like that so i'm gonna be really happy to see uh how much it grows in the years to come so thanks again for letting us in there we apologize to everybody for the uh technical issues that we were having it had nothing to do with us or our equipment it was a hundred percent the wi-fi at combat club and i had that conversation with danny so as much as i'm very appreciative of you letting us in there to do the 
the live streaming and stuff, bro, fucking get your Wi-Fi fixed. Get your it's shit not together. bad. It's just in a in a place that's too hard to uh, to spread the fi. Yeah, there was way too many people in there with the with the Wi-Fi password for us to be able to do the the podcast properly or the the streaming properly, if you will. So all right, um, let, let's talk about the event and let's talk about my biggest pet peeve. Oh, it's going to be the same as mine. I guarantee you it's going to be the all same right, as mine. All right, well, well, all right on three. Ready? Right, One, two, three. Close out. Outs. See? <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been mulling over it. And funny enough, I went to dinner with Anna and Brooks from Temple that night. And it was I brought it up. And he he gave me a val- valuable – what's, the, what's the, the word? Insight. A valid point of view and insight from a coach slash gym owner perspective. Um which I agree with. I also disagree with it from a personal standpoint. So for those of you who didn't watch the, the event, um, there was the male blue belt category, the male purple belt category, and the women's blue belt, um, purple belt, blue belt like category, um, or white belt, blue belt. Um, the women competed. Uh, Savannah Devaku won for the women. Um, Sarah Shark MMA, um, she did an awesome job too. Shout out to uh, Retro uh, Grappler Shop. They had the Beetlejuice thing. Did you see the rash guard? I have the link for it. I now. dug the rash guard. They I have was sandals like, that too. That was awesome. They have Beetlejuice sandals. Anyway, shout out to the girls. They had <coughs> the best matches for the day because if you watch the, the podcast or the stream rather, um, that was the only one that people were going absolutely apeshit for. But then when it came to the men's, it was the blue belts were great. They still put on a show, but they had a little inside scoop that nobody else had. Well, here's it with that with that one. Carlos and I picked up on it. If you if you listen to us talking, mm. if you know, so if you talk, I'm gonna go get a drink. For those of us, those of that uh, want to check out the video. If you um, watch our event from World Series of Jiu-Jitsu, Carlos and I were talking about how it kind of seemed like a bit of a flow roll. Like the, these two guys were going, but they weren't going hard. And it was like, and you could tell. You're watching them go, and one uh, one was Steven Perez, uh, and the other guy Anthony? W- was yeah, the, with the hair. Yeah, the Anthony. D'Artagnan. The yeah. Tan, Dar, D'Artagnan, um, who had a really funky style. I really dug his his game. Yeah, he had a really cool style, but I still said, I got to show you the video. The way he was moving was like one of the characters from the movie Life of Brian, the uh-huh. ex-leper. I'll show you the video. But he was great. He I was mean, great. The moment, yeah. so, but they kind of flow rolled, and then uh, Anthony went for a heel hook when it, he wasn't supposed to go for a heel hook. And he got DQ'd. Now, here's the thing. Everybody was yelling. The funny part is everybody was yelling, there's no heel hooks allowed. And even Jason, who was refing at the time, was yelling, no heel hooks allowed. And they just kept going. And then afterwards, they said, yeah, we were just kind of closing out. We were kind of playing, blah, 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 because oh, uh, that's what we're doing. And and which is fine. What? No, it's not fine. It's bullshit. Look. It's grappling. If we were punching each other in the face, if you were, if you were, if it was, even if it was combat, it would be technically grappling. throwing a fight, right? It, qu- it was technically throwing a fight, right? But but even but here's the thing: even if it was, um, one of those more combatish sports, mm-hmm. I could understand closeouts because you don't want to punch your teammate in the face. You don't want to slap your teammate in the face. You don't want to potentially put somebody out for cheers. for a while, right. right? When it's grappling, cheers. Um, the worst thing that can happen is obviously, well, technically, is a broken bone, but yeah. is you tap to your buddy, and there may be a little animosity, or there may be some drive to get better. I do not agree with closeouts. I think closeouts are. Disingenuous. Dis- well, it's dishonoring the purity of the sport. Yeah. You know, if, if, if a closeout is, it, it's like, oh, I don't want, you know. No, you, you you try to kill each other in the gym every day. You might want to adjust your mic just a little bit. Just bump it up. Sorry. 
You know, right. everybody, everybody's, you know, killing themselves in the gym every day. Yeah. So what's the difference if you do it in, on a, in a competition? I completely agree with you, but I don't even see it that way. It's like, so here's where I'm kind of playing both sides of the of the line here where I agree with you, where it's like, well, you're here to compete. If you're not here to compete and finish off, nothing, I'll just look. Oh. Um, if you're not here to compete, then don't compete in the finals. And if you're going to sit there and do that, then you need to let the ref know it's not fair because now you're you're removing that third place spot a chance to win because, yeah, you got up to the finals, but now you're just going to sit there and say no. So now I feel like maybe more of the crowd got robbed. Saying yeah. like, okay, well, I came here to see like a match, like not you guys. Well, that's what it is. That's it exactly it. it. Now, from Brooks' point of view, and I completely see it and agree with him on it, is that you don't want beef to be created in the gym outside in front of everybody else because then it looks bad for your gym. So if you and I owned a gym, or if I owned a gym. And you and Joe Schmo like competed against each other, and you both went to my gym. When you come back, now you two might have beef, and now it comes out into the limelight. Where you know it's like if you guys want to fight, this is from from Brooks' right, point right, of view. Right, right. If you guys want to fight, let's just take it back to the gym, close it out here, keep it all in house. Which I get it, and I completely agree. He's like, if you guys want to go toe to toe, let's bring it in house. We'll keep it in between each other. If you guys hate each other, you hate each other. But you don't see it. So it's the same thing as kind of being in a relationship. You never fight in front of other people. I, I, well, here's where I disagree. And and with, with that, to me, if you're, if you're having an issue with somebody and you cannot settle that issue, one of you has to go. Because once somebody is a cancer... Yeah, if, it, 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 it and infects, we've experienced yes, that. And it, we've in, experienced it that. infects the entire school. So I would rather I would rather lose a student that was a was a cancer than keep two that disrupt my entire flow of my school. Yeah. So that's that's where I come from. Like if you if you're not mature enough that you can't keep your emotions in check for a jujitsu match where you get so angry that it turns into some kind of a beef. Then but you're not even do- that. But it's yeah. It's, but you're really, doing it for the wrong reasons. Though. But it's not even that. It's Listen, you came out here to compete to see how good you are. If at the end of the day, your teammate is better than you, your teammate is better than you. Or at least him or her is better than than you for that period of time. And here's here's what what I like about that. So say you and I were both black belts and we were competing and you beat me at a tournament. Now I have to work harder to make myself better. I'll get it back on the next one. On the next one. Yeah. So you got me last time, but I'm definitely going to work harder for the next one. Yeah, but then, I see, this is, again, where I see it from Brooks's point of view on the aspect that, okay, well, some people aren't as mentally stable as you and I. and it's gonna Well, then they shouldn't be in part of your school. Right, and that's, again, see, that's where... That, to me, is a win-win, so bye-bye. Yeah, so that's where I sit there and say, you know, like, I, I 100% agree with you. You know I'm on the same, like, side as you are, but... Getting the information from Brooks and seeing it from a, a coach's point of view. Excuse me. Whew, that bubbly's hitting me hard. Like, I get it. 100%, but I get it. Because you don't want that because right. we've experienced that firsthand, seeing that one toxic person and coming from a tournament situation where shit just bubbled up and came back into the gym, then it becomes a shit show, and it became a shit show for us for a very long time. And but the thing, the thing with Brooks, though, what what Brooks is coming, Brooks is coming from more of a strikers mentality, and to me, that is that makes a difference. Strikers, what you could do to somebody punching them in the face. I think for him it, though, it's also more of an old school mentality, right. which but, I don't disagree with at all. Like you know, again, right. if this was a like you said, a striking situation because he's coaching me in striking, and that's what he says. Like, man, it would it would be tough, but he's my coach. I'm gonna have to sit there and say, okay, I get it. If it was a jujitsu tournament, man, like it'd be tough because George, my professor, he's done that. He's closed out. I don't know. I don't think I've had that conversation with him on how he feels about the closeouts. I think he leaves it up to us. Yeah, like, and I, I told my guys, 
at my school, I go, if you guys, I told them they're not closing out. I said, if you guys are in the same weight class and you make it to the finals, you guys are going what at would it. You do? What would you do if they close out? And they say, like, oh, we're just going to sit there and close it out. I'd, I'd call them pussies. Yeah. And I'd make fun of them. That's what I would do. I, that's God's honest truth. That's what I would do. I'd be like, you guys I, I are a couple I'm pussies. I'm sure you would. And, and then every time they roll, I go, are you, you guys sure you want to roll together? Yeah. You know, because I don't want you guys to. But see, to, now to, you're bringing it back to the well, gym. I, well, yeah, that's I would. Yeah, because I would want these guys. But the way I do it, it I feel it, like that's the equivalent of like a parent and it's like telling the two kids to beat each other up, like in the living room, and be like, "You guys fight, go." No, I I would make fun of them, and so next time when if that came about, they wouldn't be a couple of pussies and close out. Because what what's the difference? It's a match. It's a jujitsu match. You try to kill each other inside the gym every day. Yeah. What's the difference now? Yeah. There's just something more on the line. What a piece of metal. Give me a break. Just I do think it. in a human development aspect of things, I say, like, yeah, you guys should compete. If you can't handle it, then don't be here. Right. Because why is it that you could sit there and compete against a total stranger and they kick your ass, but then you guys are taking photos and shit afterwards. But now it's your teammate and your teammate kicked your ass. Now you got a fucking bone to pick. No, you just like, no, but that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, so what's the difference? You know, what's the difference? Yeah, I, I, I think closeouts are terrible. Um, but they, I, the, what bugs me is like if it was me and it was my tournament and it was for money and be like no there's no closeouts like no closeouts allowed if you guys end up closing out where I find out that you tanked it on purpose you both get DQ'd and the next two guys get bumped up that's it I would literally say that the losers from the other two matches get bumped up because at the end of the day that's not fair to them because they were sitting there and giving it their all so it's not even from a respect aspect of things it's like i'm here to put on a show for people right i'm here like to, to yeah like, as 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 an as a promoter of the event i'd be pissed if i was jason i would have been pissed but you know what like i don't think you were there when we were talking about it at the end um and he said something that i thought was pretty cool where it was when we were talking about the the Steve uh, fight, like the blue belt fights, where like they kind of agreed on it, but they still competed, right? He's like, if they would have told me, I would have said, yeah, like yeah, that's lot. that's and that's because it's his tournament, which I think that's awesome because then it's you know it's rules of engagement. If the tournament was points, and then we came up to him and said, hey, we want to do a submission only match between us because like you and I are closing out, can we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Like, that's awesome to me. That I dig. That's pretty fucking cool. Because then it, it, you're throwing in this weird wild card at the very end. Yeah. I, I don't. I, no. And I, I'm just saying is, is there's money on the line, actual money on the line. And as a promoter, I'm trying to, I am trying to get interest into my, in my, uh, in my event, I want I want there to be hard matches for that money. I want people to lay it on the line. Yeah, because I'm putting my shit on the line by putting that money out there. Yeah, I no, I I agree a hundred percent. Was it wasn't there a tournament where there was like a buy in, like for each match? I'm pretty sure there was a tournament where it was like okay, first match like, like, like a you, poker like a poker game kind of kind like of you a, put in a hundred, I put in a hundred. If I win, I take both the money, and then the next I think it was EBI. Yeah, it was EBI where like you got to go for um, you go like all out. You can either take the money now or you take like you put it all in for this match and you get to move up and make more and more and more. Yeah, where you well, yeah, you could put was it, it on EBI. Did he change the rules? No, on I don't think it was that. That was. Now I'm pretty sure it was Dan EBI. wanted to do that with me, where Dan Dan K Daniel oh, right. K. Yeah, with, I remember where you were supposed to be like the, the, the boss, boss at the end. Yeah, whatever happened with that? No, it didn't. Never f came to fruition. But didn't they? You still do the tournament? They still. No, they haven't done another uh, combat. But there's one this weekend. There's a few matches this weekend. Jay Z has a match this weekend. Yeah, well, so Jay Z Cavalcante. I spoke to him on Sunday, and he was then. I didn't tell you this, so I called him up on Sunday to talk about some stuff. And the first thing he says is like, "Don't tell me about the waves." He's like, "Everybody's fucking texting me about waves." I'm like, "Jay Z, that's the furthest thing from my mind right now. I can't even fucking surf." 
But um, no, we were supposed to do a podcast today, but it just didn't pan out. So, you know, thanks for telling me let's do the podcast on Tuesday, Jay-Z, and then telling me you can't do the podcast on Tuesday, Jay-Z. Why was he telling you not to tell him about the waves? Was he somewhere else? Yeah, he was. He was actually up. He was in up in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. or New York. So, yeah, shout out to uh, to Yuri Villafort who destroyed, beat, beat my ass on Wednesday, then got double gold Saturday, Sunday. He got. Uh, he won his fight, and then he got his. Uh, he didn't win double gold on Sunday, but he he won a bunch of shit in the weekend. He, he got gold in his division, and, and then bronze in absolute. Yeah, he pulled out of the absolute though at the end. Why? Um. He did because he he got the points. Once he got the medal, he got enough points to qualify for the worlds because that's what he was trying to yeah, do. Yeah, that's what he wanted to do. So why do an extra match when you just had a MMA fight the night before? Drove overnight to from Pittsburgh to New York. Yeah, competed won. That's a tough drive at night. I did that yeah. exact same drive. I did that but, on tour. But that's um, so I don't blame him for pulling out. That's like okay, now I didn't let me know let he me pulled out because he got third. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he he decided to not do the semifinals. Like he just said, I'm gonna I have to s- double check next time. Yeah, can. yeah, him and, and that's I- the, back to the closeouts. Yeah, that's something that makes sense. If one of your guys is hurt, yeah, then yeah, let's just let's just close it out. No no reason to do that. But if you're both, wait, why, what difference does that make? If you're hurt, if somebody, if one of your guys is Fuck hurt, em. no. Why? No, if you're hurt, because Wolf Wolf doesn't stop just because the sheep's injured. No, but it, this is the difference is is injuries can be made worse, and it's better. It like like uh, what if they were like, okay, I just won't attack that limb. No, it wouldn't. It doesn't matter. Like Lee hurt his knee in in his match at uh, IBJJF, right. one of the first matches. And it got worse and worse and worse with each consecutive match. Same thing happened to Jacob at the new breed. He popped his knee, and then it got worse and worse and worse. And uh, I mean, that been- happened to me. I dislocated my shoulder on my first Nogi match, and then I did five, six more matches. And then at the end, at the very last match, uh, like last two minutes, I tore my like a muscle like in my groin. So, but I yeah, did but, all but my matches. It's not a knee injury where so my he was shoulder getting, and my hip, and he was he he missed like I want to say two or three weeks after that after that Jacob or Lee Jacob yeah, and he would have you know he and it was getting he kept injuring it more not not even somebody attacking him but just like pushing it pushing off and and trying to use that that leg to get leverage and stuff like that he could have done one more and ended up totally destroying his knee. So he was gonna do, he was gonna do the gi, and he was limping. And I said, "Dude, no, yeah, no, you you you're hurt. There's no reason to do this. Just take take off the gi and relax." And he still missed three weeks after that. Man, we're having issues with the video. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I did it. I did it. That's I had you. Dis- yeah, I did. But a shoulder, a shoulder dislocation. Yeah. If 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 you dislocate your shoulder. It's not like it's not going to wreck your shoulder anymore. It's already dislocated. Right. A knee that's a that's a te- that could turn from a tear to a a full on like a, or go from a rip to a tear. Right. That's something to deal with, and that's like that's the difference between taking some time off to rest and surgery. I don't know. I don't disagree with you. I mean, yeah, I just so it's, it's like you know that's that you're makes not sense. Paid. To me. If you're, you're, you're not getting, getting paid. paid. Yeah. If you're getting paid for sure. You know, and it's not it's not MMA. It's it's um it's it's something it's it's grappling, you know, that's what we do. And uh guys please are we sure that it's even translating to video? What do you mean? The glitch. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, sorry, we're having an issue now again. I think now it's the camera. But Whatever, I guess I gotta go buy another camera mm-hmm. now. So, actually, it might still be under warranty, so it is what it is. Yeah, it's fucking Twitch, but whatever. We'll make it work. So yeah, so that would be the to me if one of one of the guys is hurt, that's a that's a valid closeout. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you just don't want to compete against your teammate, that to me is not a valid closeout. And I under, but here's the thing: I understand why some schools refuse to do it. 
right? I understand. I understand it. I mean, and I, I get, get the it. mentality. I definitely. Get I just it. don't believe it myself. I think for smaller schools, like I wouldn't do it, but like I get it for bigger schools because that again that can cause a big rift between people. So it is what it is, man. But I mean, whatever. I think that was the same thing too, like with me, and like I get it because the other two guys were Sam and Felipe. Sam from Wagner's and Felipe from Cyborg's. And obviously, they're technically both, I guess, under fight sports, even though they're two separate academies. That, they should have they should have fought it out. I, I think they should have fought it out, too. But I think it's one of those things. They probably had to have the conversation with their professors, and that was the decision that they came down to. Or I didn't see any professors for them. I think no, they just I'm, came there. No, they, they probably oh. texted them. I mean... It and then the most impressive display was the white belt um, from Flow Jiu-Jitsu. I can't remember his name. Oh, uh, that was... Damn, what was the guy's name? I, I ref- Cole? Cole? Cole Malik. Cole, Cole Malik, Malik from Flow. Uh, I refuse to believe that kid's a white belt. Like, I get that he might be a white I, belt in the gi, mm-hmm. and that might be what it is, but he you do not get that... G- that good. I'm saying a little sandbagging. I think it's you a little sandbagging. You not get that good in I less think than he, two years. he probably had like a lot more experience. He probably had more experience in the gi than in no gi. Oh, no, I he, no, I think it's the opposite way around. What I think is what Let's I think. Look it up. I wonder if I could find him. Let's look it up. You what I truly it. believe is he may be a white belt and he may be tr- only training a couple years. Um, but he's only a white belt because he probably doesn't do gi that often. He probably does mostly no gi. And Let's but regardless, him. regardless, even if he has only been training a couple years, he was impressive. Where you know the other blue, the other guys were blue belts, um, and above. He the his his um defense was on point for all the leg stuff like he he just seemed to have a really tight game where where uh d'artagnan i don't remember his name but um he had the funky game this yeah he was very um very energetic yeah and it was like really funky movements i really yeah. enjoyed watching him grapple yeah no it was really cool it's definitely one of those things where we could go back and watch it and kind of analyze it some more that might be something that we got to start doing is like doing some uh, post tournament analysis videos just to really kind of check out some cool stuff that they did and highlight the the different competitors. That'd right. Be cool to do. If we can get better video set up and everything going, for sure, I think it's something that that we will do in the future. I would like to anyway. For sure. Um, let's get going on some news here. Get my David Letterman pen going. So, uh, hey, your buddy dropped out. Herbert Santos dropped out of his match against uh, Gordon Ryan. Did you know this? Have you heard about this? Uh, no, but it was what was he said he he didn't want heel hooks. So the way that it started was Herbert Santos took on the match, and then he said, um, "No heel hooks. If Gordon Ryan is so good, then he should do it without the heel hooks." So Gordon's like. Fuck it, let's do it. And actually, the guys from Third Coast Grappling told him, like, well, if you're if you're that good, should it not matter what the other person is doing? But, okay, Gordon agrees to it. No problem. And then uh, the guys from Third Coast Grappling were telling Herbert Santos to, say, to give them a date. Like, hey, like, we need your information so we can book these tickets. Like, they're, you know, tickets from Brazil are getting pretty expensive. And then he comes back and like, oh, I'm only flying direct. I'm only flying direct. I don't want to fly unless I, I want, uh, like, unless, uh, I think he even wanted more money. But he's like, I'm not going to fly in. I'm not going to do this unless I'm flying direct. And my coach, we're not going to do this. They're like, And he was just giving them such a fucking hard time, like, and wanted a whole bunch of money. They're talking about, like, $6,000 more. And they're like, you know what? Fuck you. No. Yeah. Like, no way. Like, if you're, you either take this or you don't. So he dropped out, and Gordon now is going to be competing against Bo Nickel, who is a three-time NCAA champ and a the current world champ for under 23 and 92 kilos in wrestling. So It's going to be a wrestling match? 
Yeah, so they're doing uh, a modified uh, rules, I think is That's what weird. it was. I think they're doing, um, like, they're, it's going to be, like, stand-up and all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be basically almost like a wrestling match. And why is Eber Santos match. my buddy? Just because I, I said he's are, good. Yeah, he's not that good. He is good. He's not that good. Is Clearly, he? he's not good enough to go up against, like, Or he Gordon. doesn't think he is, but he is, a, he is good, and you can watch video of him and see how good he is. All I see are videos of him pissing his pants or running away, trying to kick some lady in the crowd. Those are the videos that I've seen. So no, he's, I, I have no respect for the guy. I really don't. Competition geez, his competition videos. He's good. I think and, and, he and, won at Brown uh, Worlds, and he's done like a couple of pans here and stuff like that. He's won stuff, but I don't think he's that good. I have no respect for the guy after all this bullshit that he does. He talks so much shit. The difference like with guys like Gordon. Fine irony. Talking shit about a guy who's... <laughs> no, but I, it's like, I'm not a fucking world champ talking shit to another world champ, and Gordon is a fucking champ, and he's sitting there's like, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Please, let's do it. And, oh, you don't want to face me, boy. But he's telling you he'll do it. He even told us, said, yes, we'll do your rules, whatever you want to do. So now you're finding every way to go out. And even the, the guys from Third Coast Grappling are like, you can tell that they're dying to say shit about like what he was really saying. And they just don't want to. But at the end of the day, Herbert Santos does not want to face Gordon Ryan. And that may be true. but that- And I don't blame you. But the fact is is that now you have a guy who doesn't even really do jujitsu, who's a wrestler, and he's more than willing to take on Gordon Ryan. Well, but it's, the, it's more but of a... the awesome guy at jujitsu slash world champ doesn't want to face another Well, one. it's more a kudos to Gordon Ryan if it is like a, a wrestling match. That yeah, he's, he's willing. Taking, I'll tell you right now. I'll look it up. I that he's willing that. to, uh, you know, put jujitsu on the on the side burner and just use wrestling. Um, that just wrestling is totally different than than jujitsu. What's like? There's there's really no. So here it goes. It's uh, him against. Uh, Bo Nickel in a 15-minute BJJ match with no leg locks. Okay, so. So it's, oh, something along the lines of a hybrid freestyle slash ADCC scoring system. So it's really going to be kind of like ADCC. Does Bo Nickel know anything about Yeah, I think he, he's, trained, he's trained jiu-jitsu. Pretty sure he's trained jiu-jitsu at least a little bit. Uh, either way. You hope so. Either way, he's willing to take the match. No yeah. problem. So why can't Herbert Santos take the match? Herbert Santos is afraid, apparently. Um, and actually, Bo Nickel was here in Florida. I don't know if he's still here in Florida or not, but I got to hit him up. I should go take some photos of him training before this match on the on the 7th. Where's, it, where's he at? It? He was in Miami. He posted a photo. He was in Miami. Uh, I've never seen the guy actually grapple, to be quite honest, so I have no clue. But obviously, he's three-time NCAA champ, and that's not anything to scoff at. Nope, not at all. What do you think is more difficult, being an NCAA champ or being a jiu-jitsu world champ? Um, IBJJF or ADCC? Let's say IBJJF. Um, I'll say IBJJF. Really? Yeah. Why? Bec- well, it's not as physically grueling because wrestling... So wouldn't season. that make so wouldn't that make it more difficult? No, you have to beat more people, I think, and to become a jujitsu world champion than you do in a, in a day than you do uh, a the wrestling match. A NCAA champion is that true? No, I said I think you. Have I don't know to. if that's true. And you have to. Here's the thing: with when it comes to wrestling. You know what you know. There's, there's really not a lot of different games for wrestling. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. There's just wrestling. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to jujitsu, you have to prepare for guard. You know, people that are guard players, people that are top players, people that are half guard players. So like, you have to have a wider array of techniques to become a world champion in Brazilian jujitsu. Uh, than you do, you know, folk style or freestyle wrestling. I'm trying to look up the brackets right now for what, like, the 2019 was. 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, let's say, like, this is for 125 pounds. So let's say you pick one person, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six matches until, like, the winner's decided. Right. And then there's something else that the wrestlers get that um, jujitsu. And theirs is a one, two, three, four, four day thing. So, so you get like more Thursday, rest Thursday night. Friday. So you might have no. Two. You have a match every day. So yeah. you have one match every day. One match every day. That's. But again, they also have to meet the weight requirement every one of those yes, days. Yes, but they also get a minute rest in between rounds. It's it's three two minute rounds, I think. No, well, you're the wrestler, not me. Um. Yeah, it's three two minute rounds, and and then you get like a in between each period, you get a rest. I gotta ask. It's uh, not rounds. It's Craig periods. Jones. Craig Jones is gonna know. He's a champ. Um, Inducted into, was it the Penn State Hall of Fame? Who? Craig Jones. Craig Jones? Craig, not Craig Jones. Greg. Um, Greg Jones. Yeah. Greg Jones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but um, it's three It's three two-minute periods. And um, you get a rest in between each period. Not like a full minute's rest, but like you do get a, like a little bit of a break. Yeah. So, you know, to me that, that makes it. You know, the fact that you get a break. So is it tougher, or what about compared to ADCC then? Oh, ADCC, hands down. Tougher? Yeah, because it is wrestling. for, Like, it's aggression. ADCC is but aggression. But you only have, like, I mean, they only had three matches, four matches in two yeah, days. Yeah, but no, but they're. Which actually they could, well, they only they go up to 15 minutes. I think it was. Yeah, yeah they, could, they can go a lot longer, and they're a lot rougher than the IBJJF matches. That's for sure. So. I mean, it definitely takes a lot more to be an ADCC champ than it takes to be an IBJJF champ. Yeah. I think so. Because there's plenty of world champs that have never been ADCC champ. Oh, yeah. A ton of them. And there's, but there's plenty of ADCC champs that have also been world champs. Yeah. I know. We'll have to see. So I'm actually looking forward to. I mean, honestly, I was really looking forward to that match against Santos, just because I wanted to see Gordon smash him, to see him like just follow through with everything. Um, this one is interesting for different reasons. Um, I'm not as hyped up about it, just because I'm not the biggest fan in wrestling and I don't know as much about it. But it's interesting to see. I'm going to be more interested to see how how it plays out for Gordon um, and how he approaches the match, especially because it's no leg locks. So Yeah, but his game is more about back takes than leg locks. No, for sure. And, I mean, his game is also great against people being the aggressors. So... He's almost like the counter puncher, yeah. if you will. So I, I'd be curious to see. Speaking of counter punchers, did you see what happened this weekend at the BJJ Fanatics tournament? I did. I saw a video of it. I posted the video of it. If you uh, haven't seen the video yet, why don't you go ahead and uh, hit up Jiu-Jitsu Radio Instagram, and you'll see the video. Tex Johnson was competing against William Tackett. and Who's 16 years old. 19. 19? 19 years old. And Tackett was trying to push out of a leg lock, so he pushed off of Tex with his foot. He kicked uh, off hard. He kicked off hard. Um, and then Tex, in clear frustration, punched him in the fucking face. I wouldn't say frustration. I would say in retaliation. Retaliation to what, to what, he's, what he felt was and a kick. A kick. Which... Even then, it's still allowed, and he's done it himself. He's kicked no, off. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't say out of frustration or what, what. It was out of anger. It was, but it was. It was a retaliation, not not uh, just to be a dick. I and think. then, did you listen to his explanation after? I did not. His explanation after was that he was actually reaching for his head, but decided to pull back. With a bald fist and ended oh, up hitting him on, in the man. face. Oh, come on, man. Just say what you did. Like, at the end of the day, like, right, that's the thing. It's like, man, if you would have just said, I was mad, I fucked up, I punched him in the face. And by the way, it barely connected. No, it connected. No, it, it barely connected. connected. I think it was, it's one of those where it connected, but he was like, as is, 
it was a bat to make contact. He, he pulled. He did it yeah. short. It was just like a plop. Like we're kind of like if we were like, sparring, like that was like a love tap sparring kind of thing. But he still did it. Now here's out of the whole thing. Like I don't really care about like text doing that and like whatever. It was stupid. Like just admit that you fucked up and it is what it is. But it was the lack of the refs controlling of the the match to sit there and say, okay, well, no, like that's a DQ. And here's the worst part from reading more about it. Michael Zinga, who's like the head of BJJ Fanatics. I met him before. He's a nice guy. And then uh, I forget who the other uh, side ref was. And then there's the guy that was on the mats. The two side refs like didn't see it. They're, they weren't even looking. They didn't see, he said, it. well, we didn't see it. We weren't looking. Well, it might have been in the, the angle they were at. They couldn't have seen it. But even then, then it still comes down to the guy that's on the mats. It's his decision to sit there and say, like, Bro, you punched them in the fucking face. Like, DQ, you're done. You know, like, that's the way that it should have been. Like, that's just the way that it is. If I'm at an IBJJF tournament, if I'm even at ADCC and I come up, bottom, done, DQ. Yeah. It is It is what it is. It's no matter what grappling event you're doing. If you throw a Unless punch, it's a combat jujitsu. Unless it was a legit mistake. Like, you were swinging... You remember like the the combat jujitsu one where the guy did it in stand up? That was even then that was a stand like he right off the stand up. He just came in, wham, DQ. And then he got all pissed off and it went a whole different way. But even then, DQ, it's instant. So why is this? Dude but but up there? like people do get punched and shit like that. For sure. In a in a grappling match when like like if you're if you're trying Clubbing. to or you're trying to explode out of a move, sure it happens. You know it but happens, again, but it's that not that happens in transition, right, not like transition, not sitting whack. there whack. Like I'm not. No, sitting I here agree. In front of you. That was that was a punch, and and Tex should just own that. Yeah, it should just be like, look, dude, I did it. Like it's one of those things. Like he already had enough issues with outside of the mat stuff. Like why would you add to that persona? Why don't would you sit there and say I fucked well, up? Well, from what and here's the thing. From what I hear. He's a super nice dude. When I met him, he was super nice. And um, I met him like at the at the Kasai in Orlando. Super nice. Yeah, That's and, what I'm and, saying. Like and, I'm not even mad at the guy. I'm just saying, like, yeah, come on. And dude. apparently, he's gonna be uh, fight sports. He's making the official move to Miami. Yeah. And um, no, he the cyborg posted it the other day. Like I, they just made the announcement. Like he's he's he's, he's officially fight, fight sports. sports. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. You know, and it's like, and people like I talked to. So uh, Philippe goes on to fight sports a couple times a week. He rolled to him, and said, "Super helpful, super humble." Um, you know, and he, it may just be one of those things that when you put he puts on the competitive, yeah, he's on the hat. He's just well, he says it. He's like, "I'm going to break your fucking leg." Like he said it. Like he's he's an aggressive person when he's rolling. He's competing. It is what it is. That's what I'm saying. Like, dude, nobody would have faulted you if you would have said, "I got worked up." And it yeah, was that's just, what I'm saying. Like it would have happened, but now it's like, come on, now dude. now, now, now it's you're like, just, you're now you're a bullshitter. Yeah, you can't that's bullshit exactly a bullshitter. It. That's exactly it. So I mean, it is what it is. But well, maybe he'll come out and say it. You never know. But text if you're listening, just call it, dude. You did it. Whatever. It is what it is, man. So in other news, Ben Askren retired, and nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. Ben Askren retired, the most overrated MMA fighter all time. He is not the most overrated. Who's more overrated than Ben Askren? Than Ben Askren? Oh, there's plenty. I just don't have I don't I don't have time to go through the Rolodex in my brain that were overhyped and and never amounted to, to half the hype. I'll wait. Brock Lesnar? Not not the same. Not the same. You're not wrong for thinking that, but it's not the same. Because Brock Lesnar didn't sit there and tout being undefeated. Because he, he wasn't undefeated. He wasn't undefeated. Ben Askren sat there and said, oh, I'm undefeated. But he also fought tomato cans. But he never said, And he never said he was the best either. Yes, he did. No, he did not. Never said he was the best. He said he wanted to compete against the best, but never said he was the best. I still say... The Dana White threw him under the bus. And there's actually like a sound clip where he was saying, like, Dana will be happy that I'm retired. He's like, You've been hanging out with Woodley too much. Like either way, definitely was overrated. I think he would have been better off just 
staying well, it initially retired and saying like, honestly, oh, I went undefeated. It would have been nice to see him there when he was a little bit younger. Five years ago, would have it, for sure. It might have been a different story if he would have played his cards right instead right. of trying to be a smart ass. Like talking shit about someone works more for the opponent instead of the owner of the organization. Um, I wouldn't want to try and get into Bellator by talking shit about Scott Coker. Um, definitely didn't play your cards right on that one. But at the end of the day, would he have he made more money, seminars and all that stuff wise, by saying undefeated MMA fighter, wrestling champ Ben Askren, instead of saying like former UFC fighter like Ben Askren? No, because he had a good run. He was one champion, uh, w- one fighting champion. But again, the like, uh, he was. Uh, what was the other one? What was the other company he was the champion of? Was it Strike Force? Fuck no, no way. Bellator. He was a Bellator champ. I don't think so. Yeah, look it up. Let's do some fact searching. Let's do some. Pretty facts. sure he's not. I don't think he was ever in Bellator. He was just well, in one FC. Was. No, he was just a one FC. Douglas Lima went to Bellator, and he's a uh, champion there. But I don't remember Ben Askren being a Bellator champion. Ben Askren. Or st- definitely not a Strike Force champion. Wikipedia. Let's see. What did you got? You got to talk more into the mic, too. Um, Wrestling team, the Rufus Sport. Um. It would just say championships, like either on the side or off. Whatever. I'm looking. I'm looking here. Um, one FC champion. One FC. He was in Bellator. Um, and I think he was the champion. Walked away from the. Uh, either way, I don't care. Still don't care. Still think he's. Askren was a former one welterweight champion and former Bellator welterweight champion. So How many yeah. fights did he have in Bellator? He had. Still don't care. Then why'd you ask? He had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fights in Bellator. He he came did to he Bellator go, at did four and oh. But did he go in Bellator? He was at one FC, then Bellator, then no, UFC. It was nope. Bellator, then one FC. Yep, he was yeah, he why. was uh Scrub League and then Bellator for eight fights. And yeah. then 1FC. He should have stayed at 1FC. If he would have stayed at 1FC and done another two or three fights like that, he would have banked. He would have made some great money, especially with like he the new He still retires ownership. at 19 and 2. Mm. And he, you know, he had, he was a champion at two of the places that he went. I would have loved to have seen him fight Gilbert. I would have loved to see Gilbert just smash Gilbert him. Gilbert would smash him. Yeah. Gilbert would have smashed him so hard. Either way. Much appreciate uh, Damian Maya and Jorge Masvidal for schooling him to the real game. Uh, love you guys for it. Another great uh, grappling match. Gary Tonin against Davy Ramos. Davy Ramos. Davy Ramos. Nice. That fight to win 132 in Hawaii. Hawaii. That's that going to be a be good nice. match. It's going to happen this weekend. I would love to go I would just to Hawaii and sure. maybe catch the event. Maybe catch the event. You know what's funny is actually Seth Daniels was getting some shit from uh, from fans because they're saying that he had too many people from one certain gym on this fight to win card, and people are saying, "Oh, there's plenty of other gyms in Hawaii." In Hawaii, yeah. It's like, well, tell them to go and sign up and uh and put their name in there. Obviously, Seth knows what he's doing as a fucking matchmaker for for grappling matches. So and it doesn't. Also, it, it, the, the process isn't hard. It's not difficult. You go, you go and sign up, and and if they like you, if they'll they put like you, in you they'll put you in. But I also, will be signing up soon for whenever they come back nice. to Florida. But also, if it's his fucking event, he can do whatever the fuck he wants to do. So go fuck yourselves. Exactly. I, it's. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? It, it is what it is. Well, no, you can only deal. You can only do with what you have. Yeah. You can. That's all. That's what it comes down to. You can only deal with what you have. And if you don't have people's names from other parts of the island, yeah. yeah. Go kick rock rocks and flip flops. It is what it is. And plus, if anything, maybe he 
wanted to make sure that he got people more from schools that he could depend on sales making it to well sales and making it to fight night yeah I mean, how many times do you see promoters like overbook fights because they I know will so many this, people are going to drop? I don't care if you're the greatest grappler on the planet. If you're not, if your name isn't going to fill seats, no one's going to get you. No, no one's, one's going to bring you in. For why sure. do you think? Why you know people? People wonder why uh, you know Gary T- like the Danaher Death Squad guys, the um, a lot of the other guys. They wonder why they're getting on everything. It's because. When their name's on it, it's They sells. put asses in seats. They put asses in seats. That's all there is to it. You see Nicky Rod talking shit to Luke Rockhold? He's, like, making posts and stuff. No, I did not see him. That's he made, like, a couple of posts. They were they were pretty good, like, shit talking. There wasn't anything crazy Was it crazy. on Twitter or was it Instagram, on? Instagram. On Instagram. But I can't wait for that Polaris match. I really can't. What What is he saying? Uh, I forget what it was, but it was pretty good. I'll pull it up. I don't know if you're gonna make me go look it up. Yeah, honestly. I'd like to know what, what what kind of shit talk he was doing. Oh man, I hope he didn't post it on his f- story, um, just because then it, it would have disappeared. Nick Rod twenty four seven. What did he post? Um, where was it? Oh, he said, "Daddy, don't play no games. See you soon, sunshine." Luke Rockhold. And then what else did he put? Nope. There was something else. Yeah, I think it was just on the um, on his story where he was talking trash and stuff. Uh, what's this? No, yeah, that's all I got. Sorry. Oh wait, is that something else? Yeah, here we go. Damn. Nope. I guess it was on the story. I should have screenshot oh, it. Well. Sorry. Um, other thing that I got for you: Yuri Samoas gets knee surgery. So shout out to Yuri. Here we go. Hopefully right. get uh get some uh, quick healing there for you, champ. Looking forward to seeing him back uh, competing. And then I got another sad one of, uh, this is out of the UK. Amateur MMA fighter Saida Alitaha, uh, 26-year-old, died of a brain injury during a fight on Saturday at uh, Fast and Furious Fight Series. She collapsed from a blow during a fight and died on Sunday. So she fought Saturday night, took a shot to the dome, and died at the hospital on Sunday. It was super sad. It's yeah, I read it morbid? that headline. Is it morbid for me to sit there and wanting to see that shot? Um, it, well, it probably wasn't just one shot. It was probably the, it was, well the one that did it, the accumulation of shots yeah. that did it. So it could it could have been any of them. Yeah, and the one that put her out might not have been the one that was the most. Damaged. It might have not. Yeah, it might have not been the most like serious. Like it looked like it was just a serious. Like yeah, that's pretty sad. I mean. 26 years old from fighting and then the other guy that fought the the champion from titan fc he took uh he actually uh i forget his name right now it's gonna burn me for not knowing him but um uh, we actually did talk about him a little bit he um he asked lex from titan fc if he could take a fight out in brazil and it was kind of like a last minute fight and um he basically had a stroke um from the weight cut, it was so serious that um, he collapsed after the fight. He fought the fight, collapsed, and Alex Davis, who's his manager uh, from American Top Team, great guy, they had to, like, carry him, and then they put him in the ambulance. And, yeah, they, the doctor said he had a stroke. Due, It wasn't even from the fight. It was due to the, ex, like, extreme weight cut he did to get on to the fight card. Yeah, that's not good, man. So it just – well, that actually ended his career. Because of that stroke, he's like, I can't fight again because of that extreme weight cut, which sucks, man. Well, that's that's a lot. Yeah, man. and and can you imagine being like I think twenty something years I think old? The, one of the problems is is there's not enough weight classes in MMA. I think everybody feels that way. You know, we we need we need a, a one sixty five. We need a one seventy five. I think the you run if you add all those other weight divisions. You run the risk of watering it down, like boxing. Yeah, where but well, boxing has multiple organizations, multiple organizations, but multiple weight classes. Like their weight classes in boxing go like every two to three pounds. Yeah, it's, it's like, something stupid. It's like really ridiculous. I'm talking every ten pounds. 
So all we're really doing, all we'd be really doing is adding one in the lower weights. 165. 165, bump the 170 up to 175. 185. You can even do a 195. So add two more. Do a 195, a 205, and a 215. Yeah, but it's also, I think, as long as you don't have a universal governing body for the same thing that I make the argument with the refs. If you don't have one universal governing body when it comes to the weight cutting procedures or what these fighters have to do to compete in an organization... Man, well, you're look gonna at run. ones though. One, one has. But he, the bullshit part about one is that nobody checks it. They don't check it. They don't what do check you mean? it. So what happens with one FC is if you're in California or you're in the middle of Colorado, they don't have anybody coming to your house to check on the weight. No, it, it has nothing to do with that. It, it has to do with when 10%, you arrive. Right, but they. The thing is, is that they say that they check throughout the year on what your weight is. But they don't have someone coming up to you randomly like USADA and saying, hey, how much do you weigh? They just call the guy up and be like, how much do you weigh? Oh, yeah, what am I fighting, 155? <coughs> because we know a former 1FC fighter who literally told us this. Oh. Herbert. And other 1FC fighters have said it. Like They, they, they say it. it's like, yeah, they don't really check on it that much. If you're in... In Asia, yeah, they have people there checking on it, but they don't check on it that much. The only people that are really like being enforcing this is California, and we've lost fights in California because of that. Because they go, it's got to be, you can't drop more than ten percent, or you can't be ten percent above what the fight weight is supposed to. Yeah, be. when you arrive in, like that week. Yeah, like that happened, but that happened. No, it happened here in Florida to Gilbert. No, that was different. That was different. They, it wasn't because of the. They they just called it on him, and there was no real reason. What do you mean? They just called it on him. He was cutting the weight, and he was fine, and he was already he was only like a pound or two off, and they're like, no, they just called the fight. They didn't give him an explanation on it or anything. They're well, like, I remember him saying something about it being right, but the commission didn't give him the real thing. They're saying, oh, it's an unhealthy cut. He's like, this is what everybody normally cuts. Everybody else, people are cutting worse right now. They're like. They were, I, they just seemed like they had it out for him because it made no sense because other people had worse weight cuts for that fight card. It was something real. It was something really weird. And Florida Boxing Commission is super fucking sketchy. Like it's well documented, and I've seen it in person. Every like, every boxing yeah, commission but Florida is sketchy. Florida like Boxing Commission. I've seen them do the stupidest shit because they're dumb fucking people. There's a lot of dumb fucking people in the Florida boxing commissions, and they're like, I just, I've seen them do dumb shit. Even when I did the karate combat thing, like the commissioners don't really give a shit, and they were doing stupid stuff. Like it, it's just they didn't even, um, they just, they half-ass it. And if they feel like having like a fucking hard on for you and giving you a hard time, they're gonna do it. But I watch guys sitting there like not even paying attention, and they're like, oh hey, can I get a photo with you? It's like, bro. You're not here to be a fanboy. You got to hear, sit here and pay attention to it. I remember for Glory, like the Glory kickboxing one, I'm in the back room taking photos. And you know what the commissioner's doing instead of paying attention to the fighters? He's talking to me about photos. He's like, oh, what kind of camera is that? Yeah, I do a little bit of side photography for like the hustle and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, do your fucking job, man. Like, I'm all cool. Like, let's talk. Let's talk after you do your job. Like, I'm taking photos. You're playing with people's fucking lives. Ugh, commissioners don't do shit. Commissions, athletic commissions are full are bullshit. No, that's what I'm saying. And money talks with those for with those sure. things. For sure, for sure. But it's like I like on, the man. fact like they they levy fines. Where does this money go? In their pockets. It just goes straight into their pockets. Yeah, like it like, doesn't go to pay on loan. You just pay. So if I sat there and find you, oh well, you were one pound over. You need to give us twenty percent of your purse. Like you give up twenty percent of your purse. It goes to the commission. It goes to their pockets. It goes to fund the commission. That's all. What do you think? Fund the, them, it, the parties, their cars, whatever. You name it. It's it's a scam to me. It's, it's a scam. Yeah, no, it's a scam. It's a now, scam. Now, do I? Should there be something that protects the fighters? Yes, to, yeah. that's what a commission should be for, is to protect fighters from from doing stuff that will get them hurt or killed or do you know stuff like that. That's what a commission should be for, and it might be better 
to um, instead of having commissions, have fighter um, what are they called? Uh, Organizations like the fighters union. Unions. That's different. You no, you, no, I know, I understand. But you're getting you're getting into deeper, deeper like issues, which is like you know the NFL's players union and the NBA players. No, union, I agree. Which is but great. I'm saying if you if you if you t- if you agree to be a you know a fighter, you got to become a part of the union, which means you have to meet the unions. Yeah, but now the fighters have to pay the union, and right, now that's right. even more money that they don't no, get. Right? Yeah, but you're gonna have to pay somebody anyways. I'd rather pay for somebody. Or I'd rather pay people that have me in their best interests. I would, well, and that's unions, why you have a manager. And, and, and unions, and unions ensure that fighter that people get treated better. A commission doesn't care about the yeah, fighters. Yeah, but like when you start dealing with unions, then you're also that's more people that are getting their pockets lined, and it's a whole. Di- you're adding. I agree, but if you have it, if you have it like you have the NFL players union or an NBA or whatever, where you have former fighters being the ones that that are are doing the information that's that's totally different like like i would be fine with forrest being the head of a of, well I remember of, it was of, gonna be kung lee and i want to say it was like john fitch or something like that like they had a bunch of people they were doing like a whole lawsuit i don't know whatever happened yeah, with that but i would i would be out like if there were a fighters union i would totally accept uh forrest being the head of the union He's he he does a lot of stuff he'd for the UFC. For no, he'd he, be like for like it. he cares about the fighters. Yeah, but he would never do it because he's so embedded in the UFC. And Dana White would be like, "Bro, what the fuck are you doing?" Yeah, but if it was, a, if, I'm not saying because let's be honest. If it wasn't for Dana White taking care of Forrest Griffin, he probably wouldn't be making that much money. Well, he, he if it wasn't for Forrest Griffin, there would be no Dana right. White. There would be no UFC. There'd be no UFC. There'd be no Dana. Whatever happened to Stephen Bonner? I know he got in trouble again. He's doing pro wrestling, but he was like, he got a DUI, and I think he like, he's like, cops got called on. He went kind of like the Mayhem Miller route. He was trying to do pro wrestling with my buddy. Did Mayhem Miller die? No. Is he still alive? Yep. For some reason, I felt like he died. No, he's still alive. Speaking of something, I wanted to. I don't know if I want to bring this up because it's gonna put like a real fucking downer. I don't know if I should bring it up. But it's been kind of been fucking with me this whole week. Um, so, long story short, <laughs> my dad became friends with this like older gentleman, like earlier in the year. Like they just kind of hit off a of friendship, whatever. Um, and I met the guy. He was a is a lawyer on California. Older dude, like I want to say seventies, eighties. Um, even though he's older, he's he's got a pep in the step kind of thing, right? And when I met him, I noticed that it was something like really weird about him. And he couldn't, he didn't look right at you, but he was trying to. And anytime I'd call him, and I don't want to say his name, but whatever, it doesn't matter. His name's Jerry. Um, he was like, he'd be like looking down, let's say if he was eating or something, be like, hey, Jerry. And he'd be like, yeah, what's going on? And he, it would take him a long time to be able to bring his head up and, like, make eye contact with you. And it wasn't, like, Parkinson's. It was something else. We did find out what it was. So he got um, he got diagnosed with this neurological disease. And it was really hitting him fast, which I felt really bad about. Super nice guy. Mind you, the lawyer fucking made tons of money super smart guy who you can tell is someone that just really had life by the balls kind of thing like mm-hmm. everything he did was all gun ho about it um started acting really weird like the last few months um he invited my dad to come out to california and they went to to um uh, to uh like the grand canyon or whatever and my dad's like, oh, let's go do like a helicopter ride down because they both fly. So like, let's go do a helicopter ride in uh, in the Grand Canyon. He's like, yeah, let's do it. So my dad books the helicopter. And then the next morning, he's like, come on, let's go. And Jerry's like, no, man, I'm just going to stay here. Like, you go, you go. Like, I'm just too tired. I'm too tired. So he's like, come on, I got this for us. He's like, you go, you go. So my dad's like, okay, whatever. So he goes, comes back to the hotel, and... Uh, he wasn't even there. 
he just like i guess he took off he did his own thing or whatever um kind of weird but anyway my dad comes back and then they're still talking and i guess the the whole issue is getting worse with him medically um and then his wife contacts us and lets us know like well he's um he's gotten a lot worse and it's getting worse and um he's made the decision that he wants to end his own life. That's what she said to us. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, like he's just, he wants to die and like, he's going to sit there and commit suicide or whatever. And he was actually supposed to come here a couple of weeks ago and didn't, he changed his mind last minute. Cause he just wasn't feeling well. So whatever. I'm like, so I hit him up. I shot him an email or whatever. Like I, once in a while I'd email him and like, I've been meaning to call him up. I just haven't had the time. And then Friday, too, it was like, oh, t- just remind me tomorrow. I'll give Jerry a call. I'll give him a call. So I go, and I don't. And Saturday was when we did the tournament, so I didn't have time to call him. I uh, find out Sunday morning that, or yesterday morning, actually, that he tried to commit suicide. So he was out uh, with his wife, and his wife left him at, in front of this diner because he, every weekend he meets up with his buddies to have breakfast and, you know, shoot the shit. And then the friends call up the wife like, hey, where is he? He's not here. It's like, well, I left him there. They all try to blow up his phone. Couldn't, like, he wasn't working. Finally, someone gets the phone to start responding, and so he started tracking his phone. They tracked him to a, to a hotel, like a motel or whatever banging on the door couldn't get in so someone went on the room above his and dropped down the balcony and opened they found him on the on the bed like he just took a ton of pills and so they rushed him to the hospital he's in a coma right now how fucked up is that and now here's the thing that fucks with me the most obviously like i pushed back on like i didn't have time on calling the guy so that burns me because i literally would have called him probably right before he would have done that and then he was supposed to come here. He wanted to come here. He just decided he wanted to come here. The guy has his own private jet. He was going to just fly over here and hang out with us and stay with us. That means my parents would have fucking found him dead in our home. If he would have done that. If he would have done that. But that's why he wanted to do it because he didn't want to do it over there. He didn't want like to deal with his yeah, wife. I don't and know stuff. if that would have happened. I think... I know. Well, I think that he wanted to do it when they went to the Grand Canyon, and that's when he told my dad, "Oh, you go, you go. I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm tired." And I think he was gonna try and do it then, and just didn't have the guts to follow through with it. I, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, like, it's been fucking with me, man. I can't relate. Like, I, I, I can, I feel bad, and but I can't actually empathize with that because I don't see a situation where. I would consider doing it, doing it, but you've never been in a situation where you are so <laughs> worked up here, <coughs> Sorry. where no, you're good. Um, where you're been, where literally everything was taken away from you. So imagine like, right, you right, can't, right. you can't do jujitsu anymore. Like but you can't I, move. Like you literally, like, you know how I've thought about that. I've like, thought about that. A but lot. like, you know how like Muhammad Ali was towards the end. Yeah. Okay. He was worse than Muhammad Ali because he he wasn't he didn't have the shakes he didn't have the the Parkinson's as much like he shook a little bit but it was literally like to do anything like you can tell it took every single like ounce of strength in his body just to sit there and be like and just almost like sloths kind of thing everything everything so he it's, I, I, look even that though there are people on this planet. That are worse off than that. And it's like, I can't, like, again, I can't, I can't empathize because I really can't put myself in those shoes. Um, to me, if I'm not, if there's life in me, that means there's still hope. Yeah. And you never know the cure to whatever ails us could be on the next, could be yeah. happening tomorrow. Yeah. Like, you know no, what I'm saying? It's true. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, but what fucks with me is like. It's such like a selfish thing to do, but like I I understand it because the little bit that I knew the guy, I could tell like the kind of person that he was, you know? It's like if you're sitting there and saying it's like if you had Usain Bolt and all of a sudden you took I mean, the guy was super intelligent. 
the guy had like you know he had the fire in him and like he fought for everything he had and he succeeded and he had everything like i mean literally the guy had the dream life like he private jet mansion on the water in california on the mountains like you know he he had it all he literally had it all but the thing that he valued the most was his intelligence and his brain and his ability to communicate with people he was a lawyer yeah but at the same time it depends on what school you come from you know where but you get everything like you get it like when you have that alpha mentality where now you're no longer in control and your control is being taken away. Like I can see it, but I don't justify it. Like there, no one should do that because it's not just about you. I've, you know, look, there, there have been times where I've had the impulse, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if I just crash my car? I think, well, every, everybody's had that thought just because you're Um, wondering of what's next. I can understand wanting to Yeah. every once in a while. I cannot understand actually following through. And like, like I get it. Like, you know, everybody's different. You don't know what's going on chemically in somebody's body that could be making them. They don't even want to have those thoughts, but it's drilling in their head. So it's like, listen, like I get it, but like, it's not about you. Like, it's not about you. It's everybody else. There's somebody there. Like I said, I didn't know that guy that much, but I sat there and talked to him. Like the fact that I wasn't able to give him a call to possibly be the one that like stopped him like man like that kills me because i would have done what i like it all honestly like i don't have a lot of money i don't have a lot in life but if i'm talking to someone and i can tell that's the case and i don't have even that much friends with them i would fly to california i would literally drop everything that i'm doing just to buy a ticket go over there and talk to the person face to face yeah but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you say there's nothing you can say but you know that's, that's not true change because there's somebody's mind no, because would. people have been talked down. People have been talked they, down to they've ledges. They've been talked down. They've been talked into delaying it. No, but if somebody people. makes up, look, somebody makes up their mind, they make up their mind. And if it, I'm a firm believer in that, you like when it comes, like think about addicts. It's not the rehabs to me that helps the addicts. It's them saying. I am not going to do this anymore. Yeah, but see, like, that's not true, though, because there's some people that physically can't. I mean, look at what happened with Trevor. Look at what happened with Trevor. He made the decision he wanted to change his life, but it was eating away at him enough where, like, it ended up finally getting him. No, I understand. I understand. But what I'm saying is it, what it comes down to is with, with addicts is it's a personal choice. It's that I'm I'm not going to do this anymore because they've made up their mind. They've made up their mind. And people often people have to hit the very rock bottom yeah, to get I mean, to that point. Um, so but once somebody's made up their mind, it's it becomes self fulfilling prophecy. Like you start see, I mean, I don't I don't disagree with you because I have the same mindset, but also in talking with more people who actually have dealt with it, like it's, I get more of an understanding from their point of view of my hard headedness and personal point of view alongside the facts coming from someone who's dealing with it, where it's like for some people it's in their bones, it's their demon. So, yes, you may have a personal choice, but it's your demon. That's what I'm saying. Like, it sucks because, listen, if you're telling me that, like, you're suicidal, I'll do what I can to to tell you it's not, like, it's not worth it. There's people that care about you. Even if you're yeah, by yourself and you're homeless, someone cares about you enough to tell you not to do that. Yeah, but even if they, who cares? Like, when you're at that point, who cares what people care about? If I can't function correctly... You know, I don't know. I don't think I would ever consider it, but I wouldn't care. I'd be like, so what? Look, well, that's I can't, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not it's living. Like, I'm, you know what I'm but saying? But it's such like a weird thing of saying, like, you have every right to do whatever the fuck you want to do to yourself. It's your body. It's your way of doing it. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's such a weird feeling for me to sit there and say, like, I get it because I'm watching him struggle. I'm watching right. him, like, suffer. So it's like, I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go. So who's I don't the want selfish you to lose. one. Right. But like it's one of those things. It's like, but if you're in pain or it's driving you crazy, it's like, what do you do? Like that was like the whole Kevorkian, like back in the day. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Like you see people are in misery, like, man, like 
I get that you're suffering, but it's like, what can you do? It's like, so it's been like a mind fuck. I'm not trying to make like a bummer out of it, but I mean, obviously we know guys like from the mission 22 guys and they're really pushed towards it. Like, like there's somebody there that to help you. So if you're yeah, not but sure, it, but, but there's yeah. somebody there to help you. Well, but I don't ever not see like, yeah, but I want to be careful though. because I don't want to sit there and say like, yeah, we get it. Go ahead and do it. No, that's no, not the no, fucking no, no, no. case. But, but there's a difference. There's a difference though. There's a difference between dealing with pain and you know emotional pain and 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 things of that nature as opposed to feeling as you know less of a per like like look at um excuse me Stephen Hawking yeah. Stephen Hawking wasn't always like that no he no, no. walked around he had his own yeah, thing and, like if, and, and if he would have said I want to commit suicide people would have understood and I guarantee, you know what I'm saying? Even though he was w- one of the most brilliant minds to ever walk the planet, people would have understood. And then the funny part is that it was only getting worse, worse, and worse. Like, he never got better. It was just constantly getting worse, constantly getting worse. So it's, where where do you draw the line? It's like your own personal hell. Like, man, that would be my own fucking personal hell. And, like, that's the thing that would draw me even crazier about this whole thing because that's like one of my biggest fears. I was having the conversation with him, uh, like yesterday. It's like Alzheimer's and dementia, like that kind of stuff. That's like my biggest fear because I don't want to forget this. Yeah, I don't want to forget. You, you got to realize it doesn't matter though. Once it's gone, like you're not going to remember. You're not going to remember. It, so it's like it's it, yeah. who can, you're trying to shave with a yeah, trombone. But it's, but it's and, and but it's see, like, like, and, I, and I see like I said the same thing. But then once you start learning more about how it affects the person it's not that they forgot they know that they forgot even if they they fall into a a weird like fluid type of existence they know so it's not like it's not like how we're thinking like oh you forgot whatever it's like you're just in the moment no there's things like imagine looking at your phone and you can't understand what it is that you need to do like you know I, I, I it's like I, you no, have I this pen and it's like how the fuck do i make this pen work and then, like that frustration builds up so that's the part like man that fucking kills me it's like so it's like one of those things where you learn to be more understanding of people and that's why i say like it's not about you it's not about me sitting there feeling bad for you but fuck what do you do it's such a weird thing at the end of the day it's like <coughs> you decide to off yourself I, as a friend, care about you, and I don't want you to do that because it's going to hurt me not having you here. It's like we can try and do something. It's like, fuck, man. Like, But you know what's funny? It, 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 think about it like this, and this will really bake your noodle. We have a stigma for people that will that want to kill themselves mm-hmm. uh, because they just don't want to live the way they're living anymore. But somebody that sacrifices their life willingly, like an, like a, a soldier that jumps on a grenade, that's you know, what's a, what's really the difference? You know, that's what's it's like. I don't know if I agree with it that way. Well, it, the, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is like a life is a life is a life. Well, if you're jumping and, on and a grenade, you're you're taking, you're, t- you're trying to save those around you. Why do you think? And why do you think this guy? Well, you're saying you know, that, I. Well, I get what you're saying now. Where you're saying like because you don't want other people to deal with the misery, you're gonna put them through because of what's happening to you. Right. Okay, I get that. That's what I'm saying. Like, fuck, man. It's like, so where do you draw the line? Because I'm, I'm I don't a believe, believer. I don't believe you should ever kill yourself. Um, I don't. And, and it's because I've always been of the mind that God doesn't give us more than we can handle. Right. So if, you, if he's giving you this, it's because you can handle it. And if you know that and you. You're right there. Thought what I felt like a cat rubbing up against me. No, it's the cable. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. um See, I'm the. I've always been in the school of thought that my rights end where yours begin. So you have every right to do whatever the fuck you want with your body. It's yours. You have it. Like obviously, until like, you cross the line where you're hurting somebody else. That's the way that I look at stuff. So if I'm doing something because I want to do it, 
whatever. But if it goes to affect somebody else negatively, that's where I draw the line. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but the, anything you you cannot, but you cannot gauge what is how something is taken. I can say something. That well, I'm saying so- like like physical pain. Like I can go shoot my gun anytime I fucking want. But if I go to shoot my gun to shoot at you, right, right, I can go drive my car 200 miles an hour in the middle of nowhere because I know no one else is gonna get hurt. But I'm not gonna drive my car 200 miles an hour in the middle of 95. And possibly smash into somebody else. So that's what I'm saying. That's where my thing is. Like, I can sit there and have a conversation to you. I can be a bullshitter. But if my bullshitting ends up creating a lie that's actually going to cause damage to you or somebody else, then that's where <coughs> that's where my existence lies. As far as that's why I prefer caring about somebody else and like trying to do whatever to never be dishonest. Well, he- here's where I where I'm weird is I don't personally feel anybody should commit suicide but i also feel that everybody should have the right to do that at the same time that's where it's like i have a conundrum see well that's what i'm saying that's you know, the same me, thing i'm me, no it's the same to thing me, but... i feel like no it's not an option suicide will never be an option i well i should say i don't foresee suicide ever being an option i don't want to ever say but um I don't foresee it ever being an option. I just but hate that doesn't mean that I don't, you know, if somebody else does it, just, you know, try to do it. it, it like, no, don't sit there. No, don't no, no, no. That That's no, no, no. It's like, <clears throat> it's, Fuck, that sucks, man. yeah, whatever. It's like, you cannot, like, if you're going, like, so uh, again, it's your body. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You should be able to do whatever I say, you want. I say, you fight the good fight. You have this once. Don't sit there and give up on something because you're just because you're in pain. Like if you can't like all I'm saying is that it takes reaching out to you somebody. But you can't say that as well. You I mean You can't say that. You can't say just because you're in pain. You I like no. You, it's, you I know don't understand saying? their pain. Every, everything is yeah. relative to you. Like yeah, but what I'm saying is giving it a shot to try and get help is. Well, but how do you know he didn't? And I'm not saying he didn't. Yeah, I'm I sure. I'm sure he saw the. But that's best what I'm doctors. saying. But like, I don't ever want to sit there and say something where it would possibly give someone like, oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna go do it. You see what I'm saying? Like the the way that you're saying it is like it's. I get what you're trying to say, but no matter how you say it, it's going to come out wrong. It's the wrong thing to fucking say. It doesn't matter. Like, Well, here's the thing. I'm not trying to say the right thing. I'm just trying to say my own truth. Right. My own truth is don't do it. I don't want you to do it, but I cannot stop you if that's what you want to do. The only thing I would ask is not do it to, in, in, you know, in a, in a way that... Don't hurt others. Yeah, that you don't hurt yeah. others. Or make it so you're, you can't, like, your family can't grieve for you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, give them that option, yeah. you know? Like, like there's, like, I don't, <clears throat> like, the people that, like, shoot their, shoot themselves in the face with a shotgun. You know, it's like. No, see, like, whatever, man. If, like, it's like, uh, it's the people that take out the family members and then kill themselves. That shit pisses me off. I was having a conversation with someone the other day. Like, it happened here at one of the shooting ranges. The mom was getting, like, divorced or something. <coughs> and, like, she took her son to go to the shooting range. She's like, oh, this is my son. Let him learn how to shoot a gun. So he goes, shoots a couple of times. And mind you, the, the range uh, guy sitting there, like, keeping an eye on him because they rented a gun. That's what they're supposed to do. And the mom's like, oh, my turn. Bam, bam. She like blows the sun, then shoots herself in the head, like right there in front of the range guy. And the, there's video out there, like, because they have the security cameras. And the range guy just sat there for like four or five seconds, like, complete and utter shock. And then go, takes off running. He like takes off running because he's like freaked out. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. It's like, that shit pisses me off. That shit pisses yeah, me off. Yeah, well. If your life fucking sucks, that's whatever. But don't fucking make yeah. other people pay for it, man. But. Either way, that's that's been fucking with my head, man, for the last like couple of days, and I haven't really been able to to sleep well. 
Just because it... Oh, shit. Big ass frog. See, I told you he was going to come in. Motherfucker. Can you kick him out? Just block it so he doesn't no, keep I'll on block. jumping in. So there's a bufo toad that... Oh, he's coming in more. Yep. Oh, he's totally in now. Yeah, just don't kill him. So because the weather is so awesome out of here... Oh, don't use the sign. Now he's going to like juice up the whole sign. Um, the weather is amazing here in Florida. And we decided to do the podcast with the door wide open. And actually, there's a little hole on the side of the um, of the front door. And this it's the home for this bufo toad. So Sean right now oh, is... Tri man. Did he go in deeper? It's going deeper. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. So I think we're going to call it a, a, a night here now just because now we're going to have to deal with this bufo toad situation. They are poisonous, by the way, so don't lick a bufo toad. With that being said, thanks for watching Jiu-Jitsu Radio. Please support our sponsors. Uh, check out Choke Aloha, Draft Choke, Jiu-Jitsu Soap Code, Diamond MMA. Go support them. Check out Sean, Gorilla Boy, BJJ. Follow me on Sunder Marketing. Thanks so much for all the support. Peace. You can't leave us. Here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence, and nobody can hang with my stuff. Keep stealing. Woo! Wheeling, dealing. Living, being right. Jet flying. Son of a gun. And I'm having a hard time holding these alligators off. <laughs>